we've heard a lot of kind of both those sounds, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about low horn playing. I wrote down a few things. And so that first version, uh, I haven't done for a little while, but I made that sound too, and maybe some of us have heard that quite often. So I think the cause of that is blowing our lips up and using too much air. So I'm gonna give you um, three things and then three in each. So the three things that we're working on for performance are the technician, the musician, and the person. So on the technician, technician, musician, and person. On the technician, um, we overblow a lot down low because of that big sound. And we think, oh, it's gonna be this much, but it's not because our aperture has gotten bigger. So it's a balancing thing. And if we push more air, or this, even the same air as a loud mid-range, we're gonna blow that bigger aperture apart. And that's where the ghosted fronts happen and why. So my three things on the technician, the how process, is gas, solid, liquid. And think about this when we're maybe looking at sound production in general, but especially down low. The gas is our air, that's the most important thing. Size of air, angle of air, not just blowing air, but moving that sound out in the form of air. Uh, and then that hits solids, my teeth and the mouthpiece. Um, and that's what determines the, the pitch, the air, goes at the solids and then they hit that combination tells my liquid lips where to go um, so yeah you can have a little, little bit more passive lips um, and the lips are between the teeth and the mouthpiece I can't move my lips that between in there that's all that they're trapped between there so I use my air against bottom teeth and that moves in and out or forward and back uh, and the mouthpiece. So kind of like that really powerful hand dryer that blows our hands apart and moves our skin. That's what the air is doing, is moving our, our skin like that. Sorry, my phone keeps going asleep. Um, so those are the three things for the technician. And then the person that goes into the practice room, walks into performance, what do we think and how do we learn these things? I think we gotta find that sound and then sculpt it and figure out how to do it. So finding that sound, one of the things most people say is open your hand, get your hand out of the bell. Also, don't forget to consider getting your elbow out of the way as well. Whenever our hand is covered, the first thing we lose is anything special about our sound. So keep it open. What I do when I'm working on low is I do bells up. Now my phone just closed. One moment, please. So I do that hand here, and bells up. I do a lot of that work. And don't worry about pitch as much. Do that later, this is sound production work. Really get the hand out and be getting that sound in mind. It's really useful, do it a lot. When you're alone, <laughs> bother your neighbors. Uh, and then, so bells up is one thing. Another thing is working on entrance bars, which is Start air for a couple seconds and then stand good air for those whole two seconds, nothing else. And then start moving things, I think it's my bottom teeth, to start making a sound. Okay, it's not. All that lip muscle stuff for me, I think, in the mid-range stuff, it's just bringing my bottom teeth up and the lips end up getting caught in the airstream. Okay, and then while doing that, we balance the ratio of air in the sound. Here I got, a, got rid of the extra air sound that sound louder by moving the sound, not just blowing air at the sound. Okay, so balance that ratio and then make that louder. And the third thing I do uh, for how to work on this person in the practice room is tongue stopping. Never tongue, I don't think I ever tongue stop in performance, but it's really useful in uh, practice. So, a lot of people we hear, Surgery and cut that beginning learning part off 
uh, so we can put the front of our note at the middle of the note where it is good. We learn that by tongue stopping. Get the note where we want it, doesn't matter, don't feel bad about how bad it starts, we're learning. And then bring the tongue up and stop it. And don't move your lips, leave your lips right there so you can feel where the note is good, stop there with your tongue, then release it again without changing anything there. So we really learn how to do the surgery of cutting, like editing on an apple, you know. Pro Tools, uh, lop off the front, put the uh, lop off the front part of the note, and then move our articulation to the middle of the note where the vowel is good. I'll show you what I mean. Kind of like that. Then another piece of massive learning is while you're doing it, if you run out of air, stop everything and then breathe in through your nose while leaving all that stuff there. And then bring it all forward again without releasing it. Leave the tongue there and then release it on that same embouchure, that same setting of solids. And when you do that, feel you moving your air down to different angles as you do that. That's a place of big discovery and let it sound how it sounds. Uh, so those three things for how, how we practice bells up, get the hand out of there, sculpt the sound, some uh, entrance bars where you do your air and then move the teeth up and see what happens to get that note. Think of the note in, the, in that airstream. And then tongue stopping for an exercise. Okay, three things for your musician. Have a story. Have a story for all your excerpts and be going for that sound. Take them somewhere, feel it, you know, feel the music. Or I just saw a recent uh, Muti, uh, Muti Music, or Ricardo Muti did a video, it's a bunch of videos, and he talks about how some people ask, you know, feel the music, and he's like, no, get lost. You don't feel it. You, you are guided by this incredible instructions that are in the music, and find that, and have that be the master, um, and have that be clearly what tells us what to do. Musical thought dictates technique, so it moves us the other way. But you can go either way, whatever works for you, figure it out. Does feeling it work? Great, do that. If having the music and its tendencies drive you, that's great too, or the middle ground between it. Um, and so one thing for the musician, two more things, the role of the low horn, be in your role as fourth horn. It's not, uh, you're not part of the fourth horn section, you're the principal fourth horn. So there's different roles for that. For your fry shoots, for example, you play your role. If not, just... That take us to you're the moving line there two and three. heard that on many recordings at all so that for me is you know either I don't, haven't heard on a recording what do I do or haven't heard on a recording great do what you want make it a low horn concerto uh, and wail on it you know and everyone will compare that to the other ones in, in the audition Seven and eight. <laughs> That's what we're working on, technician, musician, and person, and, and through that. So I hope some of these techniques help you and discover kind of how to how to be wailing in the low range. Uh, another thing for Sasquatch 5, working on those fronts, bell up. I'll leave you with this. This is what I do to how to how to work on it. Really loud, get those fronts. Once you get some of the fronts, put the long note on the end of one of the fronts.